cool. So let me quickly go through the structure streaming. So any data that grows over time, then we come to the structure streaming. So new files landing in your storage account and the updates to be uh, updates to a database captured in the CDC feed and the events queued in the sub pub, sub uh, pub and sub messaging feeds. So we go for structure streaming in these use cases. So you are you have an infinite data source by using a spark streaming. We use it as a batch and then we use or store it into our data sync. So you can see this spark dot read stream. If we have used a parquet file or a CSV file, but you can stream a table also that is a delta table dot table table name and then we take up the write stream and we use a trigger and we use a output mode and we use a checkpoint location and you can convert that to a table again input table output table in our use case we used a parquet file and a parquet file but you can do it with the table also we will do that table now so we have used the checkpoint location with a path now i want to talk about these two points uh, like trigger and output mode so when it comes to trigger trigger when you are not process uh, you have not specified anything by default by default the processing time would be 500 milliseconds okay 500 milliseconds or half seconds what i told you half seconds okay so 500 milliseconds if it is unspecified by default but if you uh, the use case might be no i want a fixed interval yeah you can go with a fixed interval like i, I want to uh, process the data with the micro batch at a specific five minutes two minutes ten minutes sure you can use a trigger processing time equal to five minutes or you might say that no i want to process all the available data into the single batch and then stop this is important and then stop i want to stop it right your stream should stop then you can use trigger once equal to true it should be like a boolean value or i want to process it in the micro batches not all uh, all data into single batch but a uh, micro batches like small small batches then it should stop then okay you can take available now and make it to true okay so this is triggered batch this is triggered micro batch and this is a fixed interval then when it comes to output mode you just now we have seen we have not mentioned any output mode by default it is happened cool just now we have seen it yes but if you want to say that hey my uh, like my table this is my final table and i have i want to say that it is complete or if you want to overwritten overwritten each batch like every time you uh, get a file if all the files will be written then you can write a mode complete in that case so first we write it happened and at the end of the streaming like if you have working on the multi-hop architecture then at the last table we'll say that it is an output mode as complete then as i've told you checkpoint location is mandatory uh, and what i want to explain you is it is fault tolerant so it is only uh, it is guaranteed that it will read exactly once it is item potent sinks okay so these are about the structure streaming now i need to uh, explain you about the auto loader concept so let me come to the auto loader concept so okay before i talk about auto loader again so there is one more topic where it you can do ingestion so let me talk about ingesting the data so many people get confused here so when you are ingesting the data into your lake house into your lake house okay lake house obviously when i say lake house it will be a delta table it will be uh, into a, a delta format and all those things into your lake house there are actually two mechanisms two mechanisms one is auto loader and second is a copy into auto loader and second is copy into so your copy into okay your auto loader concept works on the streaming part auto loader is nothing but it is developed on top of your streaming 
there is a copy into mechanism also where you can do the ingestion of your raw data into the delta lake but but copy into uses a sql command if you are comfortable with the snowflake copy into command it works similar but it is not a streaming one it is not a streaming one uh, it you have to come to that code and you have to run it every time so ingesting the data into the lake house there are two methods auto loader or two mechanisms auto loader and copy into so now uh, copy into uses a sql script if you have a less workload if you have a less workload then you can use a copy into command or if you have a real time data if you are dealing with millions of file billions of file obviously you have an auto loader option so we will start with auto loader now and then we'll move towards the copy into so let me take one more minute just to have a quick difference here between auto loader and the copy into so incremental data ingestion from the files there are two mechanisms copy into and auto loader two mechanisms so copy into we will come to this point we will talk about how the format looks like and everything but when it comes to auto loader it sits on top of your structure streaming only it was developed on top of structure streaming only and it can process billions of files billions of files and it supports near real time guys near real time uh, ingestion of millions of files per hour again so we have seen whatever the points were there on the structure streaming it stores the metadata of the discovered files this is a new point that can be achieved in auto loader only not in the structure streaming it is also exactly once guarantees and it is also a fault tolerant so what is the syntax for that the syntax for your auto loader is spark dot read stream use of dot format and say cloud files hey what does this cloud files keyword means cloud files keyword means that you are using a auto loader function you are using an auto loader mechanism to ingest the data that is the meaning of cloud files cloud files means auto loader so cloud files dot format you specify the format dot load specify the path then you say dot write stream option you give a checkpoint location checkpoint location is mandatory and give a path and if you want a table you can just say dot table if you want a parquet file you can say dot parquet and give a path and then you can uh, uh, if you want a table you can give a dot table and if you want an external table you can give an option path also so this is your syntax to work on the auto loader so let me copy this come to our uh, notebook so i am into new notebook guys i request you to please be on this now i'll get an auto loader auto loader and this is your ingesting your file okay ingesting files in your lake house okay in your lake house by using an auto loader so let us do it auto loader come on guys i want you all to be on this notebook now this is your syntax let me write it here syntax here so if you remember if you remember uh, in streaming the first point was to give a schema to give a schema but when it comes to auto loader you don't need to do that without schema also it works you just need to give a keyword called or uh, cloud files now what i'll do i'll just go back i'll go into my input stream input stream and i'll drop these two files i'll drop these two files i'll delete this first we will stream a jan file and then we will drop one feb file and then march file and so on so now i request you to please concentrate here i'll use cloud files dot format the format is our csv file so let me give it as a csv here so let me complete it as csv okay cool so let me uh, take a format here as csv now i need a i need to get a path so if you remember we have used the streaming now let me go back to the recent one and pull out the streaming notebook from this and i'll pull the 
apart from there. Okay. Let me take a streaming here. And I'll just pull out the path. Or I can make it. Uh, yeah, this is my input path. Let me copy this stream input. If you want, I can save this as input file, input file, and put that in a chat uh, in a text here string. And now I'll be passing it here. So I'll be taking a f string here. Let me take an f string here, and then just pass a input file. Okay, this looks perfectly fine. Yeah, so I have executed here. From here, it will uh, it will load your path. Now I'm writing it right stream. Now I need a checkpoint location. So I want an external table, guys. I want an external table. So for that, I have an output path also. Let me copy my output path. Let me paste it here. I'll just say you can paste it in the same line also. Output. Let me paste this. I'll just say this as output path. Okay. So let me execute this. And now you need to be careful when you are giving an checkpoint location. So it should start with f string. And here I'll pass your output output path. In output path, it will it will go. It will create a new. If it is not it will create a new directory in the output stream directory in the output stream i want uh, my name to be mentioned in that folder okay just a minute let me close yeah my name in that i want to paste i want to write auto loader auto loader and then in that i want to write checkpoint Okay, checkpoint. In that checkpoint, uh, I'll show, I'll save all the checkpoint locations here. And what I'll do, I'll take one more dot option, option, and I'll use a path here. I'll use a path. If I use a path, it will be an external table. I'll copy exactly all this, and I'll paste it here. I'll just change this checkpoint to your output so this will be my output and i'll give a table name as auto loader auto loader this is my first table name so if i execute this i will get an error i'll show you why please concentrate so i am just reading this i'll just put all that in one bracket otherwise i need to give a slashes here after each line so if i put that all in one bracket it will execute so it should throw us an error. Yeah, it, it says that, hey, whenever you are using an auto loader, I want you to use a schema location. Now, I intentionally did not mention the schema location here because I want to show you when you are using an auto loader, you have to use an cloud file schema location. Now, what is schema location? So this cloud file is so intelligent and so smart that whatever files you are processing whatever the files you are ingesting this schema location will uh, fetch the schema of your source file and it will store it in your schema location suppose just in case the next file that is coming in if you are changing the schema also it will work it will work your stream won't fail so that will really be useful so you have to add that in a read stream so let me put a dot option option so this is one additional point you have to do it when it comes to the auto loader so you need to mention again cloud files after cloud files dot one okay so what i'll do i'll just remove this all i'll copy this script and paste it here so you should know that uh, cloud file schema location is mandatory for auto loader so let me use an option and just say schema location cloud files. Let me copy this from here. Yeah, now I need to give a path. Hey, where do you want to save this? So what, uh, why I have done this output more output path? Because I want to save all the metadata and all my output folder, everything in this path. So that's why I made this one. Okay, let me remove this. 
yeah so here auto loader i'll just remove this and say that this is your schema location so what will happen in the schema location it will create a new json files uh, okay if you have one file here in your raw you have a jan file so this will create a metadata and it will store uh, that schema in the schema location at this path suppose if there is a new file coming in with the same schema it will not update anything this will keep it as it is suppose there is a new file coming in with a change in data like new row is coming or maybe a dropped row is coming anything if the schema is changed it will immediately detect hey there is a new schema coming in so this will update it again that update will be in the json format i'll show you how the schema location looks like so now i would able to see an auto loader table in my uh, data explorer but i did not give any database name so what i'll do i have already created a database called with my name so let me use percent sorry yeah let me use person sql and say use novel as my database name so let me execute this to make sure i'll just pass database name here also database name dot auto loader so let me execute this and see what happens now yeah it works now and your spark job is started now i need to go back and check what is there inside your output stream folder so output stream i had my name here inside this i have an auto loader new folder i should get three folders here this is checkpoint location this is schema location and this is output first let me verify my output yeah this is my output and i got it in delta logs why delta logs because i did not mention anything here by default by default it will be del uh, it will be delta format you got delta logs everything is perfectly fine now i'll before i show you what is checkpoint and what what is there inside a schema location let me go back and see how my table looks like so you can select this you can come to your data preview here uh, it's still in the preview you can click on the data tab and then you click on your database inside this database you can see an auto loader table so if you want to start querying it like sql so i am doing it on top of streaming guys you can see i am doing it on top of streaming so your data is still streaming i am just using a sql query on auto loader so i can just use auto loader here so it will use three level namespace catalog name database name and the object inside the database or the table name so yeah you can see you got three tables now now what is new in this uh, auto loader concept is you are getting a rescue data column so what does this rescue yeah whenever you use an auto loader or a cloud file format by default you will get this rescue data means just in case in your raw files if you are getting some new additional record anything is coming in that will be stored in the rescue data if some corrupt records are coming whatever the data is coming so mainly we are using auto loader for ingesting so whatever you have in your raw file that should be recorded right that should keep a record so that's why we are getting a new column called as a rescued column so once we move towards the modern architecture moving to silver table we will drop this column no need to worry but now let me go back and show you what is there in the schema location so you will get one zero dot json file you can see this is a json file zero it is saying that okay whatever the raw file you have read the schema is stored inside this json so let me click on this and i'll show you uh, how it looks like you can see this so if you want i'll just copy this copy this and put it into the notepad yeah you can see this hey this is just a json file and it is showing you the fields the column names you have id it is a integer type it is a meta uh, all the metadata of that then the second column is somewhere name the type is string gender the type is string you can see everything it is detected even it is detected the format of the date also it is date month and year so you can see uh, all the metadata and it is showing the version 1 suppose 
if you drop one more file in the raw container with the same schema this will not change you will get version 1 only just in case if you change the schema if you add a new column if you drop a new uh, if you drop a column if you do something change you will get one first file here that is json1 and your output will be based on this schema location that is the output will be based on that one json we will do some real time use cases by changing the raw files but now you can see your stream is still running because we did not mention any trigger so if we have mentioned the trigger and if you would say that once equal to true or maybe processing time equal to two minutes or five minutes then your uh, stream would depend on the trigger now before i take up any question i'll drop one more file here inside my uh, auto load sorry in my input stream input stream input stream i'll drop one more feb file let me do that which is having a same schema again which is having a same schema there is no change in the schema first we will do a simple one then we start changing the uh, schema so let me drop a feb file here so if you ask me what is the difference here the difference is we did not mention any schema here as we have done it for streaming we have define the schema here but here auto loader we did not mention anything it is working and it is already also detecting the schema for that files now i dropped one file so you can you can just verify it so yeah you got one file and now it has processed also how much second it took to process you can find out easily you can see the raw data and you are getting some json script also it is showing you all ids and uh, all the metadata information about that stream so let me just quickly check my table i should get six rows so you can see within fraction of seconds you got your data appended by default the mode is output mode is append here now i'll just take one more minute to show you whether the uh, schema location has changed or not so let me get inside this and auto loader schema location schemas see there is only zero json file there is even though you have dropped a new file there is no schema a new schema detected because that is the exactly same schema what the jan file had so this is about your auto loader concept guys i hope you got this yeah you can see here i am into my data explorer now i'll just click on the auto loader uh, table name you can see all the columns data types column names you can see a quick sample data if you look at the detail it is an external table and the location is this one what we have given and it is as it is a delta table you can see the versioning of the table okay first is it created a table then your stream got updated first file got updated then the second stream got updated you can see all the details of the notebook you can see all the details about the operation which it happened so it was a mode append by default you can see everything in this section history because we got a table so that's why we can see all this if it is a file then you would not able to see all that Thank you for watching this video guys i hope you got a clear understanding on how the uploader works so maybe in the next video we will see uh, different options that can be given in the auto loader if your data is getting changed if your schema is getting changed and all those things thank you for watching this video if you like it please subscribe to my channel share this video with your friends like the video keep learning thank you again